If you haven't been able to tell by now, I kind of like anime. That being said, you'd be forgiven for thinking that I'm only interested in shonen titles, considering my upload so far. But, to be honest, I like a little bit of everything. Of course, I did start out watching shonen titles, but that was mostly because of what was available to me at the time. Once the streaming boom hit and I discovered what the medium truly had to offer, I slowly made an effort over time to get out of my comfort zone and see what else was out there. I soon came to evolve past my monkey brain limitations of big guy punch other big guy, but it has taken me a little longer than I'd like to admit to expand my tastes. Which is why I still can barely believe that in an anime season bringing us the likes of Demon Slayer Season 3, new badass kid on the block Hell's Paradise, and the long anticipated anime adaptation of manga hit Mashal, I somehow managed to find three series that I enjoyed more. Don't get me wrong, I still love me a good tournament arc as much as the next weeb, but the chill vibes this romance season are not to be underestimated, my dear viewer. So if you were looking for something to diversify your watch list, to thaw the winter in your heart, perhaps, before the summer of hype descends upon us, I've got you covered. But before we get started, feel free to drop your favorite spring series in the comments down below, as well as any other titles you'd like to hear me talk about in the future. And click the subscribe button to get the heads up on my next video. Now moving right along, first up is the heartwarming Skip and Loafer. So I'm at least kinda cheating with this first one since it's technically classified as a seinen title, but if you're interested in romance or slice of life stories, this one is definitely one you're not gonna wanna miss. Skip and Loafer follows Iwakura Mitsumi, a high school first year who's fresh out the boonies, having just enrolled into a prestigious high school right in the middle of Tokyo. She's got quite the go-getter attitude and dreams of one day becoming a leader in her nation to help make some positive change. You quickly realize, however, that she's a little overconfident, or dare I even say naive, once you learn that she's planning a 100% no-hit speedrun at life itself. Unsurprisingly, she fails her run hilariously quickly and gets lost, like, immediately after leaving for school. Just as her perfect attendance dreams are about to go up in smoke on the first day, the local slacker kid who's been sleeping in until now shows up to save the day. However, he clearly doesn't understand the gravity of the situation and seems to downplay the significance of this major canon life event in Mitsumi's eyes, and she's quick to snap at him in spite of his help. At this point, it becomes evident that this show's gonna be one of those where the two opposites balance each other out, but there's actually a bit more going on that helps to really flesh this series out and give it a good amount of nuance as well. At first, Mitsumi comes off as rigid and inflexible, but she's actually extremely adaptive. She knows that she's in an environment that she's never been in and will have a lot to learn, so she takes her failures with stride and does whatever she needs to in order to see things through to the end. Her unapologetic commitment to being herself despite being in an unfamiliar and sometimes hostile environment is infectious, so her classmates become just as endeared towards her as slacker kid and she's quick to make friends. And that's kinda where the magic of the show becomes much more apparent. The series comes off more as a love letter to youth itself as opposed to just a generic romance series. As much as she's still committed to her life goals, Mitsumi realizes quickly that she's having fun on the journey and pivots in various ways in order to learn and enjoy the things that she can only experience now at this point in her life. She sees difficult situations as tests to overcome or puzzles to solve, so she's constantly taking in her surroundings to try to keep up with what's happening around her. She's got it in her head that since she's from a rural community, she's got to really pay attention so as not to embarrass herself around all these new people. However, she doesn't realize that this attitude of hers tends to make her not only stand out, but also brings people together and helps them to be more at ease. Her earnest and genuine nature tends to take others aback and leave them disarmed. The first person to experience this is local slacker kid, aka Shima Sosuke. Despite turning out to be the school's popular kid, he gives the vibe that he's already given up on his youth for reasons too long and spoilery to get into right now, so his dynamic with Mitsumi carries a lot more substance between them than just romance or simply balancing each other out. Skip and Loafer is full of characters who end up being much more complex than they initially appear, so watching them interact with each other and seeing their respective walls come down between them is worth the price of admission alone. This is a really great show and I hope it gets a second season because I was really surprised with its quality. Absolutely recommend. Next up, 
my love story with Yamada at level 999. When I learned that one of the season's newest shows was going to be a romance centered around gamer culture, I wasn't all too sure what to expect, but between the art, animation, comedy, characters, and writing, this was easily one of the most entertaining series I've seen in a while, and it does not take long for it to differentiate itself from the crowd. The first episode's opening scene starts off with our protagonist, Akane Kinoshita, being dumped by her boyfriend because he met someone new in the MMO that he got the two of them to play as a couple. Don't cringe just yet though, because shortly afterwards, while venting her anger out on some trash mobs, she starts trauma dumping to one of her guildmates about the whole ordeal on the very same MMO that her ex found her replacement on. This woman is a walking disaster that I cannot and refuse to look away from because it only goes further downhill from here. After blowing tons of money she doesn't have on a makeover, she heads on over to a live event for the MMO I mentioned earlier hoping to flex on her ex and salvage some shred of dignity before losing what little she has left as she face plants right after finding him. On the bright side, enter Prince Charming with Glass Slipper in tow, just in case that wasn't on the nose enough for you. But plot twist, turns out this guy happens to be this guy. The same guy Akane was trauma dumping to a little while ago. Small world. It gets even smaller when Akane's ex shows up at this point to reveal that Prince Charming is actually a popular pro gamer that he's been fanboying over for years. Not one to waste an opportunity, Akane then takes this moment of weakness to channel her inner Kazuma and bribes Yamada to pretend to be her new boo with a code for a rare item for the MMO she got upon arriving to the event. With this much chaotic energy in one episode alone, I was already hooked, but outside of the shenanigans and antics, there's a lot of heart here too. Once you look past all the cringe, Akane is an extremely sincere and considerate person. She proudly wears her heart on her sleeve, and despite her display in episode 1, she tends to let things roll off her back and doesn't make much of a habit out of dwelling on things longer than she needs to, especially if there are more important things to focus on at the moment, which is actually one of my favorite things about her character. Tons of romance series do this whole will they, won't they dance with the love interests that often gets played out pretty quickly considering it's usually quite obvious that they'll end up together. Akane and Yamada could have very easily fallen into this trap, but the way their characters are handled allows them to play around with this idea in a really cool way. For starters, Akane isn't nearly as brain dead as she comes off at first, and pretty quickly realizes that she needs to take a step back and reflect on herself for a bit, so we're able to see the relationship between her and Yamada grow and develop as friends, while the two both learn to get a better grip on themselves individually which is something that they also assist each other with unknowingly through their developing friendship. They've both got individual work to address before they'd be able to properly entertain each other in a romantic sense, and that's actually a pretty healthy way to approach relationships in general, so extra points for that. If you're specifically looking for something to give you that warm, fuzzy feeling with a side dose of unhinged comedy, look no further than My Love Story with Yamada at level 999. If you liked Horimiya, this will likely help scratch that itch before the next season drops in July. Now, without any further ado, get your glow sticks ready and prepare yourselves for the main event. I know this is probably coming as a surprise to absolutely nobody considering how insanely popular it's become now, but far and away my number one favorite series this season has got to be Oshinoko. If you are a citizen of the internet, you should watch Oshinoko. If you create content for entertainment, you should watch Oshinoko. If you consume entertainment content of any kind, you should watch Oshinoko. Okay, so I'm going to attempt the monumental task of describing what makes this show worth watching without spoilers of any kind, but seriously, if you haven't seen it yet, shut this video off and at least watch episode one. With an hour long runtime, it watches like an actual movie and the production quality only helps to enhance the feeling. But most importantly, it's best watched blind because I can almost guarantee that you'll struggle to anticipate most, if not all of the major plot points. This series peels back the layers of the entertainment industry to show what really goes into the shows, movies, idol groups, any of the various forms of entertainment that we all love to consume really. 
It's pretty unapologetic and matter of fact with its delivery so as not to sugarcoat the reality while at the same time not coming off as preachy about it either to give a realistic behind the scenes look with an accuracy that is equally as awe-inspiring as it is at times disturbing. As cool and as interesting as that is by itself, the overarching narrative of the story and the characters that help to bring it together are also meticulously well crafted. The extremely high production quality in episode 1 is consistent throughout the season and the writing is some serious edge of your seat stuff. Oshinoko goes above and beyond what's necessary in nearly every category to enhance the viewing experience in ways I wasn't expecting and honestly this entire video could have been about this show alone considering how much I have to say about it but we'll have to put it off for a future video. And there you have it, my top 3 picks for Spring 23. Bet you didn't see that coming. Just like I did not see all of these subs coming, Jesus Christ. I mentioned this already in a community post, but I mean it when I say this. Thank you. If you've made it this far into the video, I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe. And I hope you look forward to more of my weep thoughts and opinions soon. Peace.